Hello, today we're going to continue reading in 1 Chronicles, starting with chapter 27. This is the number of the people of Israel, the heads of fathers' houses, the commanders of thousands and hundreds, and their officers who served the king in all matters concerning the divisions that came and went, month after month throughout the year, each division numbering 24,000. Jeshobim, the son of Zab Zabdiel, was in charge of the first division in the first month. In the division were 24,000. He was a descendant of Perez and was chief of all the commanders. He served for the first month. Dodai, the Ahohite, was in charge of the division of the second month. In his division were 24,000. The third commander for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Johida, the chief priest. In his division were 24,000. This is the Benaiah, who was a mighty man of the 30 and in command of the 30. And Mizabad was his son was in charge of his division. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was fourth. For the fourth month, and his son Zebediah after him in his division were 24,000. The fifth commander for the fifth month was Shamhuth, the Israelite, in his division were 24,000. Sixth, for the sixth month, was Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite. Um, doesn't have an H in there, Tekoite. In his division were 24,000. Seventh, for the seventh month, was Helaz, the Pelonite, of the sons of Ephraim. In his division were 24,000. Eighth, for the eighth month, was Sibachai, the Hushathite, of the Zerahites. In his division were 24,000. Ninth, for the ninth month, were, was Abiezer of Anathoth, a Benjamite. In his division were 24,000. Tenth, for the tenth month, was Maharai of Netophah of the Zerahites. In his division were 24,000. Eleventh, for the eleventh month, was Benaiah of Pirathon of the sons of Ephraim. In his division were 24,000. Twelfth, for the twelfth month, was Heldai, the Nidophathite of Othniel in the division were 24,000. Over the tribes of Israel, for the Reubenites, Eliezer the son of Zikri was chief officer. For the Simeonites, Shephatiah the son of Maka. For Levi, Hashabiah the son of Kemuel. For Aaron, Zadok. For Judah, Eli Elihu, one of David's brothers. For Issachar, Omri, the son of Michael. For Zebulun, Ishmaiah, the son of Obadiah. For Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael. For the Ephraimites, Hoshea, the son of Azaziah. For the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Pediah. For the half-tribe of Manasseh, in Gilead, Edo, the son of Zechariah. For Benjamin, Jaseel, son of Abner, for Dan, Azarel, the son of Jero Jerohom. These were the leaders of the tribes of Israel. David did not count those below 20 years of age, for the Lord had promised to make Israel as many as the stars of heaven. Joab, the son of Zeruai, began to count, but did not finish. Yet wrath came upon Israel for this. And the number was not entered in the chronicles of King David. Over the king's treasuries was Asmaveth, the son of Adiel, and over the treasuries in the country, in the cities, in the villages, in the towers, was Jonathan, the son of Uzziah. And over those who did the work of the field for tilling the soil was Ezri, the son of Cheleb, and over the vineyards was Shemai, the Ramathite, and over the produce of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi the Shipfite. Shipmite. Over the olive and sycamore trees in the Shephala was Baal Hanan the Gedarite. And over the stores of oil was Joash. Over the herds that pastured in Sharon was Shitrai the Sharonite over the herds of the valleys was Shaphat, the son of Adlai. Over the camels was Obil, the Ishmaelite. 
and over the donkeys was Jehadiah, the Marathite. Over the flocks was Jazez, the Hagrite. All these were stewards of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, being a man of understanding and a scribe. He and Jehiel, the son of Hakmoni, attended the king's sons. Ahathophel was the king's counselor, and Hushai, the archite, was the king's friend. <laughs> I love that. I love that they just listed him as a friend. I'm sure he did something else besides befriend the king, but it's pretty cool that that's how they remember him. Ahithophel was succeeded by Johida, the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar. Joab was commander of the king's army. Chapter 28. David assembled at Jerusalem all the officials of Israel, the officials of the tribes, the officers of the divisions that served the king, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, the stewards of all the property and livestock of the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the seasoned warriors. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God, and I made preparations for building. But God said to me, You may not build a house for my name, you, for you are a man of war and have shed blood. Yet the Lord God of Israel chose me from all my father's house to be king over Israel forever. For he chose Judah as leader, and in the house of Judah my father's house, and among my father's sons he took pleasure in me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, it is Solomon, your son, who shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever if he continues strong in keeping my commandments and my rules as he is today. Now, therefore, in the sight of all of Israel, the assembly of the Lord, and in the hearing of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found for you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Be careful now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Then David gave Solomon his son the plan of the vestibule of the temple and of its houses, its treasuries, its upper rooms and its inner chambers and of the room for the mercy seat and the plan of all that he had in mind for the courts of the house of the Lord, all the surrounding chambers, the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries for dedicated gifts for the divisions of the priests and of the Levites and all the work of the service in the house of the Lord, for all the vessels for the service in the house of the Lord, the weight of gold for all golden vessels for each service, the weight of silver vessels for each service, the weight of the golden lampstands and their lamps, the weight of gold for each lampstand and its lamps, the weight of silver for a lampstand and its lamps, According to the use of each lampstand in the service, the weight of gold for each table for the showbread, the silver for the silver tables, and pure gold for the forks, the basins, and the cups, for the golden bowls and the weight of each, for the silver bowls and the weight of each, for the altar of incense made of refined gold and its weight. Also his plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings and covered the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Oh, that was one sentence. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> a lot of commas. <laughs> um, all this he made clear to me in writing from the hand of the Lord, all the work to be done according to the plan. Then David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed for the Lord God even my God is with you. 
He will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. And behold, the divisions of the priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of God and with you in all the work will be every willing man who has skill for any kind of service. Also the officers and all the people will be holy at your command. Chapter 29. And David the king said to all the assembly, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great. For the palace will not be for man, but for the Lord God. So I have provided for the house of my God, so far as I was able, the gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood, besides great quantities of onyx and stones for setting um, colored stones, all sorts of precious stones and marble. Moreover, in addition to all that I have provided for the holy house, I have a treasure of my own of gold and silver. And because of my devotion to the house of my God, I give it to the house of my God. 3,000 talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for overlaying the walls of the house. Wow. The walls of the house are overlaid in silver. That's pretty cool. And for all the work to be done by craftsmen, gold for the things of gold and silver for the things of silver, who then will offer willingly, consecrating himself today to the Lord? Then the leaders of father's houses made their free will offerings, as did also the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds and the officers over the king's work. They gave for the service of the house of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord in the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced because they had willingly given, for with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord, David the king also rejoiced greatly. I love that. I love that they rejoice in their giving, that they had the opportunity to give, and that was a time of rejoicing for them. Therefore, David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. And in your hand is power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and we praise your glorious name. Wow. I love that verse right there. It's um, it's First Chronicles twenty nine, eleven. It's worth reading again. It's so good. Such a great blessing. David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of David, and David said, "Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever." Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give thanks I'm sorry, and to give strength to all. And now, therefore, we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Ha, so good. <laughs> but who am I, continuing on in verse 14, but who am I and what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly? For all things come from you and of your own have we given you. For we are strangers before you and sojourners, as all our fathers were. Our days on the earth are like a shadow and there is no abiding. Our Lord, O Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a house for your holy name comes from your hand and is all your own. 
I know, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things. And now I have seen your people who are present here offering freely and joyously to you. O oh Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our fathers, keep forever such purposes and thoughts in the hearts of your people and direct their hearts toward you. Grant to Solomon, my son, a whole heart that he may keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statutes, performing all, and that he may build the palace for which I have made provisions. Then David said to all the assembly, Bless the Lord your God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord, the God of their fathers, and bowed their heads and paid homage to the Lord and to the king. And they offered sacrifices to the Lord, and on the next day offered burnt offerings to the Lord, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all of Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon, the son of David, king the second time, and they anointed him as prince for the Lord and Zadok as priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king in place of David his father, and he prospered, and all Israel obeyed him, all the leaders and the mighty men, and also all the sons of King David pledged their allegiance to King Solomon. And the Lord made Solomon very great in the sight of all of Israel and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Wow. Wow. That's great. I love that last sentence. And the Lord made Solomon very great in the sight of all of Israel and bestowed on him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. All that honor, all that majesty comes from the Lord. So cool. So yes. So thank you so much for joining me again today. I look forward to reading with you again tomorrow. I love you.